Hello YouTubers, dpeter67 here and today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, emergency preparedness and communications and uh, I've, I've tried a couple times to make this video and I just can't get it uh, under 20 minutes so I'm going to break this one up into two different segments. I'm going to give you a general overview and then for number one and then for number two I'm going to go more specifically into the ham radio portion. But uh, let's start out. Uh, this video is intended for uh, emergency situations, you know, communications, gathering intel, and potentially even um, sending out information um, and being able to talk to somebody else. So let's start off with kind of the obvious, and uh, that'll be your cell phone. Uh, if you have a smartphone, a lot of people do these days, you can also store stuff like, um, uh, let's see here, iBooks. LDS preparedness manual um, that's 509 pages of some phenomenal information the Mormons uh, they absolutely are grade A at preparedness um, phenomenal uh, you know safety they talk about guns in here you talk about food storage about uh, homesteading you know growing some food what types of clothes to buy um, a plan to buy all your stuff emergency communications this is phenomenal information. Great reference manual. You know, put it on. If you can print it, and keep it at home. That's fine. Uh, 509 pages is quite a lot. Um, I've got uh, Navy, Marine Corps, uh, Survival, Evasion, Resistance, and Escape, SEER Student Handbook. There's some phenomenal stuff in here. That is uh, basically 97 pages. Um, we also have uh, the FM 2176 U.S. Army Survival Manual, uh, 233 pages of that. Fantastic, uh, then, you know, some good reading, Life After Doomsday, uh, some decent reading there. Anyways, you've got that kind of information on here. You've got um, a compass if you need it. Uh, you know, so there's a lot of really good things you can do on here. Uh, also your maps. I happen to be in California in the San Francisco Bay Area right now, so uh, but you can GPS on that, uh, find your area, and, and assuming that that communications for your cell phone are up, that's uh, fantastic, fantastic, uh, you know, information and, and the first thing to go to now, like in 9/11, um, the switchboards and, and uh, these comms went out almost immediately. So in an emergency situation, this may not be any good for you. Everybody's going to be trying to call somebody on here, and uh, you may lose service immediately. Uh, an EMP may take out the towers, whatnot. Um, so your next big next source is uh, to get information. It's going to be a, a little radio, and um, right here we have a. Uh, this is going to be a uh, shortwave AM FM radio and you can pick up transmissions on FM, AM and a plethora of shortwave. Now shortwave is is amateur radio and you're not transmitting on this you're just receiving but you can pick up information from around the world uh, basically ham operators uh, here in the United States talk to China, uh, Japan, um, you can reach out touch Australia uh, and it has to do with how the high frequency waves bounce off the ionosphere. So this is a you know nice little one put in your go bag. Actually, uh, if you're looking for space, you know trying to trying to get down and use the bare minimum space, I saw one yesterday at Radio Shack that um, was only about uh, three eighths of an inch thick and probably uh, three inches long and about two inches high, digital. That's phenomenal, and that might be a purchase for me in the near future. Uh, again, in that same line, this is again a shortwave. It's uh, AM, FM, it's got the weather channel, and uh, it, it can operate on uh, battery, on dynamo, which is, turn this down or it'll be really, really loud. Crank radio. I can crank up, it's got like a, uh, a battery from a house phone, uh, a wireless phone in it. You got uh, light capability in there, 
and you can also charge your cell phone with this. So this is a great radio to have, uh, especially around the house if you're if you're in a bug-in type situation where you're not leaving the home. Uh, you know, it's a little bit bigger, but uh, it's great for that. Another option you might have uh, is a little bit you know upgrade to all this stuff is is a scanner, and <clears throat> you know with this with this this is a Pro 528. Um, it's a triple truncating, and I can pick up police frequencies that are in the eight, nine hundred megahertz that are constantly rolling. Uh, they're constantly changing, and I can track those with this. Um, I can also track just regular UHF and VHF, and there are emergency services that do operate in those uh, uh, in a simplex mode and in duplex off of a repeater, uh, but they do operate down in uh, UHF and VHF frequency ranges. Um, and I can pick those up with a ham also. But uh, with this, I can do ham, marine, airplanes, police, fire, emergency services. I can, I can check all that. Plus, I can follow trunked. Uh, it's got a signal tracker, so I can follow them through their, their different uh, frequencies as they, as they roll through them. So this is really good, especially if you want to find out what's going on with your local fire and, and uh, police, what's going on as information that you may not get yet through uh, conventional sources all right that goes that's all receiving type to receive information um, let's talk about transmitting and what most people are going to be used to here is going to be the uh, Motorola talk about type radios uh, there's other makes of them uh, Cobra makes them AudioVox makes them there's a whole bunch of different people that make them but basically they're, they're 22 channels uh, they operate in the family radio service FRS and in the GMRS uh, and under GMRS you do you are required to have a license it's uh, 70 or 80 dollars you send it into the FCC they send it to you um, you know Papa Bear can uh, can get the license and it's good for baby bear and mama bear and everybody else in the family uh, one license covers everybody in your immediate family uh, these are these operate in the UHF spectrum and um, in the 462 range for GMRS and in the 467 megahertz range for uh, FRS. Basically, on the FRS, they're pumping out about half of a one watt, so one half of a watt in FRS and about one watt in GMRS. Um, so. Uh, one of the things about these radios is they're required to have a fixed antenna. Now, you obviously, if you take the radio apart, you can take the antenna off, but it's not meant to be interchangeable. So uh, that's one of the requirements for these radios to be legal. Um, so just want to say that. Now, these, these you have 22 channels, and then also you're allowed to have uh, privacy codes, which are PL tones. If you know anything about ham radio, it's a PL tone. But... You can have, uh, some of these radios have upwards of over um, 120 different PL tones or privacy code tones. And you can have you know, well over 6,000 combinations on here uh, for different, um, different channel selections. Now, don't think that just because it says privacy on here that I can't pick it up in here because I definitely can. If I'm in roaming mode, I can pick up anything that's on here on, on my scan. And so can anybody else. So don't be tricked to thinking that privacy means privacy. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to talk about, and I'll make a whole video about that, is going to be ham radio. And um, I'll, that'll be part two of this. So right now I'm going to stop off uh, right here. And I appreciate you watching my video and learning a little bit about emergency preparedness uh, communications. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them. Uh, and I'll get back to you if I can. Thank you.